Hi, I'm Christian Triola, author of The Missing Method for Guitar Books. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to play Redemption Song by Bob Marley and the Wailers. Now, when I was in college, I took classical guitar for about two years and then switched over to jazz uh, for my last two or three years. Something like that. Uh, but anyway, the whole time I was playing that kind of music, and I still love that kind of music to this day, I listened to a ton of ska and reggae. In fact, I was even in a ska band for a little while uh, back in college, and it was a ton of fun. Uh, I played some guitar, I played a lot of keyboards uh, back then, but uh, my main instrument was still guitar, you know, in school and everything. And so, while listening to all this stuff, you can't help but come across Bob Marley. I mean, when you think of reggae, you think of Bob Marley. They're pretty much synonymous in a lot of ways. And so, in today's lesson, we're going to go over one of his most famous songs, Redemption Song. Now, the interesting thing about Redemption Song is it's almost like a folk song more so than a reggae song. A lot of times in reggae, you have the strong uh, upbeat, you know, like one. And it doesn't do that sort of thing. You don't even have like the fast ska beat, you know, the... None of that's there. Instead, it has a folk song feel. You know, just regular chords strummed on a guitar. And of course, it has that intro that you heard me play at the beginning of this video. So we're going to start with that. In fact, make sure you download the PDF and it's got the intro tabbed out for you. It's got it in notation form and all the chords that come up in the song are shown on that PDF so you can follow along. Now this song, of course, is off his 1980 album called Uprising. And this song, Redemption Song, became the last big hit Bob Marley would have before he died in 1981. So to start things off, let's take a look at that opening riff that uh, starts the song. So the first thing you want to know is that it is played in open position. In fact, it's such an easy one to read that if you do know how to read notes, I'd recommend reading the notes on it just for practice because it doesn't have tons of things going on, yet it perfectly sets up this song. So here we go. We have the first note is G. I play this in second position, so my middle finger is going to play that third fret. And that's a dotted quarter, so it's one, two, and. And then we move on. One, two, and. Open fifth to the second fret. And then there's a rest right after that. It's a real short note. So one, two, and three. So that three cuts right off. The four comes back to the first note, which is that G note again, last string, third fret. Then we go up to the C note in the next measure, which is fifth string, third fret. So, so far we have G, A, B, G, C, goes up to the note E, 2nd fret, 4th string, open 4th string, followed by the 2nd fret of the 5th string. And that's essentially the first major phrase in that riff. And then after that, it goes into the same opening note, the G note, still a dotted quarter note there, but then this time, A, B, D, or 5th string open, followed by 5th string 2nd fret, followed by 4th string open. And then to end that riff, we start with the B, the 2nd fret of the 5th string, up to the C, 3rd fret, back to the B, 2nd fret, open A, and then finally the G. So that ending, B, C, B, A, G. All right, so here's the whole first line of that riff. Now that you can play that line, the second line is exactly the same. So you can do the whole opening part. You just play that twice, basically. Mm -hmm. 
And there you have it. That's the opening part to Redemption Song. And then right away, we get into the chords. So let's take a look at the chords in the verse section of Redemption Song. The way the PDF is set up is it has the chords from the verse, the chords from the chorus, there's an interlude, and then an outro, which is almost the chorus, but it has some different stuff tacked on to the end to give it a, um, a different feel than the rest of the song. So what we're going to do is take a look at that first verse, and I'm also going to mention some of the changes that come up in the second and third verses that are mentioned in the PDF that aren't in the first verse. So first of all, our first chord is G major. So G major, he's playing it um, just the traditional way, the second string open, because uh, sometimes you can fret that second string, third fret to get a G, but he's not doing it that way. It's just the regular open G chord. We have the third fret on the first string. Everything else is open until you get to the fifth string, second fret, and then finally the third fret of the last string. And the strum pattern for that measure is down, down, up, up, down, up. So it's one, two, and, hold, and, four, and. One, two, and, and, four, and. Then the next chord we go to is E minor. So we just move one finger over to the fourth string second fret, take the third finger off the first string, we have the E minor. And that one is a similar strum pattern, except there's more to it. So we have down, up, down, up, hold, up, down, up. Now you might notice on the hold, I still strum down, but I don't hit any of the strings. I miss the strings. That way I can come up on the next half of the beat and it keeps things flowing nicely. So again, second measure, down, up, down, up, miss, up, down, up. And there we have the E minor. So, so far, G, one, two, and, and, four, and, one, and, two, and, and, four, and. Next up, we have the C chord. Now, in the very first time through it, the C chord is played the whole way through this measure. And it's the same strum pattern as the first measure. One, two, and, and, four, and. The second time you play through the verse, after you've gone through the chorus and everything, you have that C, but this time you play the individual C note on the fifth string, third fret. So it's bass note, strum, strum, or down, up, switch to a G slash B chord, which just means you have the second fret of the fifth string, and the third fret of the first string covered, you don't play the last string. You play that second fret fifth string by itself and then strum the rest of the chord down up. So again, it's C. And then it moves into the next chord, which of course this same thing is done again in the next line. So we'll get to that whole idea in a minute. But the first time through, it's down, down, up, up, down, up, all on a C chord. Then we switch to A minor. So A minor, first string open, second string, first fret, third string, second fret, fourth string, second fret, fifth string open. You don't play the last string. And here we go with A minor. One and two and, and four and, or, down, up, down, up, miss, up, down, up. So just like measure two, but with an A minor chord. All right, now once we get into the next line of music, basically that line is repeated a couple of times up until the very end of that section. So next thing, we go back to the G chord, same thing as the beginning, down, down, up, up, down, up. Then we switch to E minor, same as the beginning. Down, up, down, up, up, down, up. And then we do what I was talking about a minute before. We have the C note by itself, which is the fifth string, third fret. Strum, down, up. Switch to a G slash B chord, just means that the second finger, of course, is the lowest note that you're playing there. So you play 
the B note, followed by down up. And then in the next measure, you start it by playing the A, which is the fifth string open, followed by the A minor chord, which is then strummed down, up, up, down, up. So it's kind of like coming back to the strum pattern after that. So that whole section again, bass note, chord, bass note, chord, bass note, chord. And so you get this really cool descending bass line that comes out of that. And then you repeat that exact same line again, starting with the G. G, down, up, up, down, up, E minor. Bass note C, bass note A minor. Then the last line of the verse is almost the same except for the ending. So again, we start with the G, one, two, and, and, four, and E minor. And then it does the same descending bass, C chord, G chord, and then we go to a D instead of an A minor this time and play one, two, and, and, four, and. So just like the first measure of the verse section, down, down, up, up, down, up. And then the very last measure of the verse is the D chord, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So if I went through any of that too quickly, feel free to rewind, watch that over and over again, pause just so you can get all those little details there. But now I'm gonna play through the whole verse section. I'm gonna play what essentially would be verse one. All right, so here is verse one. One, two, three, four. from there we go into the chorus. But before we start the chorus, I did want to talk about verses 2 and 3, which come up later in the song. Basically, we play the same thing you did for verse 1, with two small exceptions. One I already talked about, where in the first line, instead of just playing the C chord all the way through that third measure, we play it like we do later on in the song. So we have bass, chord, bass, chord, bass. So that's one difference. So that's the first line of the verse. The other difference is in the second line, and in the second line only, instead of ending on A minor, we actually end on a D chord. So the second line of verses two and three actually sound like this. One, And then the rest of it is played just like verse one after that. So if that's a lot to process, don't worry. The more you practice it, and if you listen to the song while you're practicing it, that'll make a lot more sense to you. Or if you just download the PDF, it's right on there. In fact, the changes are in parentheses so you can see the differences between verse one and verse two. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the chorus. Now, the nice thing about the chorus is it's a lot of the same chords. So we start off again with G, and it just so happens you're strumming it the same way you do the verse section. So the first measure of the chorus is simply one, two, and, and, four, and. However, the second measure of the chorus is where we start to see a major change. We have C major, and there's no bass notes this time, you're just strumming through it, down, up, down, up, and then we switch to D major and strum down, up, down, up. So of course that D major chord 
same way we did it in the verse section where you have first finger on the third string second fret third finger on the third fret of the second string and then middle finger on the first string second fret all right so let me go through that first part of the chorus again we start with g one two and and four and c d and then you simply repeat that same thing but the third time it changes to e minor before going to c and d so here we have e minor c d then it goes back to g again g c and then the end of the first chorus we just do that same thing again. One, two, and, and, four, and, C, D. At that point, it goes back into the verse, this time verse two. Now, the second time you play the chorus, there is one difference. And that is, at the end, there is simply an additional measure of G, followed by C and D. And then after that, it goes into the interlude. So we have intro, first verse, first chorus, second verse, second chorus with the changes, and then finally we get to the interlude. So the interlude has a percussive strum that's included. And so the way you wanna get that is with the picking hand. You'll have an E minor chord for this, and then when the percussive parts come up, you simply use the heel of your hand to touch the strings down here so you get a thud sound, essentially, or a percussive sound. But it's not percussed all the way through. Instead, you have E, then two percussive strums, another E minor, two percussive strums, another E minor, one percussive strum. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So you want to think every time you say one, you hit the chord and then nothing else, just percussive. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Then you play the C chord, down, up, down, up, D chord, down, up, down, up. And then you do that same thing three more times. So you have From there, it goes into verse three, which is just like verse two. And then it goes into a chorus that then takes you to a coda. So in the chorus, it's marked in the paper where it says, go to coda the last time. So you don't play the last part of the chorus, which is the last two measures of G, C. Instead, you do play that, but it's part of the coda. So the coda, or the outro, as I call it on the PDF, uh, starts off just like the chorus. So we have G, C, D, again with G, C, D, E minor, C, D, E minor, C, D. And then right as we get toward the end, things start to change again. Here we have G is next, down, down, up, up, down, up. But then we do the descending bass line thing where we have a C chord starting with the bass note, one, two, and, slash chord, B sl or G slash B, bass note, chords, and then it does it again. G, bass note, and then for the last two measures, you have something completely different. So we'll get into that in a second. I'm just gonna play those last two measures one more time that I just played. G. All right, 
right now for the final four measures of the song. We switch to an A minor chord right before the end here. And then this time it's all eighth notes, but we have that same accent that we used in the interlude, but there's no percussive strums here. Instead, you just accent every time you say once. You'd have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, 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 one, two. So it's two measures of that basically. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Every time you say one, that's where you put a little bit of an accent. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Then you switch to a D7 chord. And this is the only time this chord shows up in the song, and it's for the last two bars. We have first string, second fret, second string, first fret, third string, second fret, fourth string, open. And then for one measure, you do that same accent and strum with one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And then it's one, two, three, four, one, cut it off on the end. One, two, three, one. And that's the end of the song. It ends in a very peculiar way because you're on a dominant seventh chord and you want to hear a nice resolution there, a G on the end, but he doesn't do that. He kind of just cuts it off, giving it this kind of cool effect on the end. It still works as an ending, even though it is a dominant seventh chord. All right, so hopefully you got a chance to catch all that. I'm gonna go through the entire outro that's on the PDF. So here we go, starting with the G chord. One, two, three, four. And that is Redemption Song. All right, I hope you found this lesson useful. I know some of it does go quickly, but again, just go ahead, rewind, pause, work things out as you need to. Uh, but overall, there aren't a ton of chords in it, and the strum patterns aren't too complicated, so it's pretty easy to do uh, once you get the hang of it. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe and then go over to our website, themissingmethod.com. There you'll find out about a bunch of books that will teach you more about chords, including Guitar Chord Master, which goes through the basics. There's Guitar Chord Master 2, which shows you how to use a capo as well as play more complicated harmonies. And then Guitar Chord Master 3 is all about power chords and rock chords. So you'll get a good sense of all the different types of power chords that you can play. All right, and while you're there on the website, don't forget that if you sign up for the newsletter, you'll get a free ebook as well. So I hope you enjoyed that video. So get to practicing, and I will see you in the next video.